why did I decide to write my book, POTUS One, The Presidency, Politics, and Life of George Washington? The reason I decided to write this book is because there's a topic that is taboo to talk about in our music, our movies, our media, our news, our academia, and to talk about this topic in depth. Talk about it here and there, but don't really talk about it. It's kind of a myth, but not. I know it's there, but I don't really know a lot about it. And that's the topic of human trafficking, modern day slavery. Now, in my book, POTUS One, I talk about uh, modern day slavery, and I talk about slavery of George Washington's time. Now, some people may say that I don't have authority to talk about human trafficking, or I don't have the authority to talk about slavery of the 18th century because I don't have the pedigree, or I don't look the part. Well, I don't think it takes any pedigree or any characteristic to advocate for the eradication and the annihilation of human trafficking. I don't think it should, but some people think so. I, as a George Washington biographer, have read over 70 George Washington biographies. I have read dozens and dozens of biographies from people and culture of the time, uh, people in George Washington's cabinet, books about Martha Washington, books about the enslaved community and the Indian peoples in um, George Washington's time, and at Mount Vernon, of the this enslaved community at Mount Vernon. I have also read books about other people in the culture who knew George Washington and his personality and characteristics. My book, POTUS One, is in the George Washington Presidential Library. And I have received several uh, letters and thank you letters for my book, uh, POTUS One. Um, and I'm not a professional author. I just want to advocate for the annihilation and the eradication of human trafficking. And some people may say, well, what do you know about George Washington and slavery of that time? Well, there are three books, four books um, in particular, uh, but three I'm going to show you. The first one is Henry Weinrich's uh, book. It's called the uh, An Imperfect God. It's about George Washington and slavery. The next book is... Uh, the Indian World of George Washington by Colin Calloway. And then the only uh, unavoidable subject of regret by Mary V. Thompson. Uh, this book is about the enslaved community at Mount Vernon. Oh, and this book here is about the uh, culture of George Washington's time and the American Indians and his encounters with the uh, uh, Native Americans and what happened and things like that. Um, it's a very, very good read, very dense, uh, like, like has a lot of information is what I mean. Very good. This is another very good book. I just explained that. And then now one of the best books I've read, I mean, besides this one, but is Washington at the Plow uh, by Bruce A. Ragsdale. This book came out like two years ago, I think. A year ago, I'm not sure. Very, very good book on the topic of George Washington and slavery. I've read all three of those books. I read Henry Weinrich's book. Now, what would you assume after reading those books I would know about George Washington and slavery? I would know quite a bit. I've also been to Mount Vernon twice. Um, and in my book, POTUS One, I talk about this, about human trafficking and um, slavery of the 18th century. Because when you don't want to talk about something or something's taboo, 
it makes people want to talk about it more. Well, don't you think? Like, hey, don't think about elephant. Don't think about, you know, whatever the topic is. Don't think about a uh, yellow house or don't think about the color blue. You're going to think about the color blue, the yellow house, and the elephant. You know what I mean? So, um, in this book, page 14, that I wrote, um, it says, no matter what people believe or talk about. Now, the reason why I said that is because this topic of human trafficking is taboo. So, no matter what people believe, no matter what, if people think, Human trafficking is taboo to talk about, no matter what it is, whether that is Pizzagate, the Podesta emails, or Jeffrey Epstein, or the Walmart Missing Children bulletin boards, human trafficking is modern day slavery. Uh, former President Obama thinks that it is modern day slavery as well. And if that triggers you, and then you should think about, oh, <coughs> and if that triggers you, and uh, and you think people cannot uh, talk about slavery because they don't look or feel the part, then you should reorganize your priorities on all human life, because your life matters just like everyone else's. On September 25th, 2012, uh, Obama made a speech about this very topic at a Clinton Global Initiative event. And then that speech that uh, former President Obama made goes on to talk about um, the detestable nature of um, slavery of the 18th century and human trafficking today being on the same detestable nature, heinous nature. Now, with all that being said, why don't people want to talk about that? Because it's, in my opinion, it's because the elites, the politicians, the people who are in politics, uh, news, media, whatever it may be, um, they're in on it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, uh, I don't know who is in on it. Uh, I don't know any of that information, but why wouldn't the media be able to talk about, we had this big thing about Jeffrey Epstein getting arrested, this big thing about Glenn Maxwell getting arrested, this thing about Mark Middleton. Why can't um, we talk about what happened? This right here is the Jeffrey Epstein flight log. You can get it online. More of this information came out in a much bigger scale after the Ghislaine Maxwell case. And I don't understand why it's taboo. You know, I understand that human trafficking of today, sex trafficking of today is detestable and it is heinous. But why do people disparage the name of George Washington? All they want to do is talk about and hit and hit and hit how heinous human trafficking and is of the 18th century, but they don't want to talk about human trafficking of today. They want to talk about the 1619 Project and all we're going to talk about slavery of the 18th century. Slavery of the 18th century. But they don't want to talk about the people of the 1619 Project do not want to talk about the human trafficking of slavery of today. This book, 1620, A Critical Response to the 1619 Project by Peter Wood is a phenomenal read and critical response to the detestable, evil, devilish nature of the 1619 Project. The New Trail of Tears by Naomi Schaefer Riley is a great book on how Washington, D.C. is still screwing over the American and Native American Indians of today on the reservation. Books I read. People say, oh, John, you know, when you look something up, um, you can find whatever you want if, if that's the only thing you're looking for. 
um, you know, don't go, don't go looking for things, uh, you know, you know, try to be unbiased and all that kind of stuff. Listen, I'm the most unbiased person there is. I want to know the truth. That's my goal. People will come after you for speaking the truth. Trust me. You'll lose friends and family at times for speaking the truth. It says um, in um, Galatians that, uh, am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? Now, I know that's talking about uh, the gospel or talking about uh, talking about God's word from my you know knowledge of that in Galatians but in aspects of that verse in Galatians about am I your enemy because I tell you the truth am I your enemy because I tell you the truth that children and kids are the main currency of the evil people of today Besides gold, silver, plenium, uh, all precious metals, besides oil, children and little kids are the main currency of the evil people of today. In my book, POTUS One, I talk about the things that Donald Trump has done to eradicate human trafficking of today. And um, 2017... He uh, had an executive order on human trafficking. And then in uh, 2017, he did another executive order. And then in 2019, there's a fact sheet about uh, Donald Trump and human trafficking, all the things that he's done. And then in, uh, in January 2020, there is... Uh, January 2020, another executive order about human trafficking. Now, a lot of presidents, Obama, Clinton, the Bushes, um, have, done, uh, have done things about human trafficking. I understand that. But, but, Donald Trump has done more to eradicate human trafficking than any modern day president. Also, in the Trafficking of Persons reports comes out every year from the State Department. This is from June 2020. Um, this gives the statistics about human trafficking around the world. It's 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 pretty conclusive, but not really. Um, what I have to say about that, if you want to know statistics, there is about uh, eight million. Uh, depending on who you look at, there's about eight million children that go missing every year. In the United States alone, it's between 800,000 to about a million. Yeah, that's a lot. And I don't understand why people don't talk about this. In my book, POTUS One, I talk about suicide. And how, I don't say it in the, in the book, but what I've learned about suicide statistics is that I think it's like 145 people around that um, take their life every day. And every, in the United States, and every uh, year in the United States, it's about 45,000 or 47,000 people take their own life. In the United States and we do more and talk more about that in news media music uh, um, movies uh, academia we do more to talk about suicide prevention than we do to talk about human trafficking prevention that's messed up both of those things are very important but how do we not talk about human trafficking as much as we talk human trafficking prevention as we do about suicide prevention. These next books of resources I read that I, I only quoted book four in my POTUS One book, but there are five books from this author. Uh, let me get these books reorganized here. Um, the first, this book uh, is titled, the section is called 
or the, the main book title is called Pedophilia and Empire, Satan, Sodomy, and the Deep State. The first book is about um, uh, blood sacrifice from antiquity to the modern day Catholic Church um, and different types of religion, Christianity, things like that. Uh, then the uh, second book uh, is uh, by, oh yeah, this guy, the author, I forgot. Um, his name is uh, um, Joachim uh, Ye Hagopin, uh, Hagopian. Um, but the second book is about uh, the United Kingdom, the UK, like Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth, um, those kinds of people, what they were involved in, in pedophilia, sodomy, and human trafficking of their time and culture. And, uh, this, 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 uh, third book here is, uh, about the Rothschild family and the Illuminati, um, and about more British scandals. This is book three. And like I said, uh, book four, this book here, was the book that I put in and referenced in the bibliography for my POTUS One book that is in the George Washington Presidential Library. Um, this is about North America's uh, uh, involvement in the um, pedophile ring scandals, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Podesta, the Clintons, all that. Um, and then this is the fifth book in the series, last book. This is about, um, like, Oceania, Australia, different parts of the world that weren't talked about in these other uh, four books. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because when I wanted to understand, you know, the whole point of my POTUS One book is the life and per politics of today through the eyes of George Washington, but stopping at what we don't know. George Washington, you know, we had in our, well, let me back up, George Washington's time, that culture, the 1700s, that slavery was only around for about 450 years, less than 500 years in the continental United States, right? Where in other places was slavery still active after that? Many other places after we eradicated slavery, uh, the 18th century slavery, the chattel slavery. So, um, with that being said, George Washington abolished slavery or freed his slaves. George Washington freed his slaves in his will, but he um, couldn't free all of them because of the Virginia law that was still involved in the United States because that those slaves that, that were still at Mount Vernon, there were some that were free but not all, were in the dowry from Martha Washington um, from Daniel Custis, and which was Martha Washington's first husband who died in his early 40s. So Martha Washington freed um, the remaining slaves as soon as she could. And I understand about how detestable slavery of the 18th century is. I really get it because I've read so many books about slavery of today and slavery of the 18th century. And that is why I decided to write this book, POTUS One, to raise awareness about the heinous and detestable nature of human trafficking, sex trafficking, child trafficking of today. I would like to uh, close this um, video with a verse. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verse 25 and 26. It says, Be not afraid 
of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked. For when it cometh, for the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Thank you for watching this video. For more information about George Washington, check out my book POTUS 1, available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and hardback.